I thank you for your gift. You want to get ugly? Let's get ugly. So how did Chief Pitoris Mendez come from a background as a Catholic priest and the de facto leader of the small remote community in Val de Lobos to become the main villain in the village portion of Resident Evil 4 Remake? What's more was the other lingering questions of how this conversion came to be and what ramifications this would entail for those who looked to him for guidance. Well, in this video, we'll be uncovering the full story of Chief Batoris Mendez, where we gather all the important information we can find within both versions of RE4, ranging from files, photos, and cutscenes. This will give us the opportunity to explain his full background lore, what possible occupation and responsibilities he had in the past, what his role was as one of the leaders of Los Illuminados, and what many atrocities he was involved in that caused the downfall of his own village community. So without any further ado, let's begin our video of uncovering the truth behind Chief Batoras Mendez. Your soul requires cleansing. The identity behind Chief Mendez, or maybe we should call him Father Mendez for the time being, is very much intertwined with his affiliation with a local village community in Valdelobos, a remote region in Spain where most of his people have come to live their lives in a time period devoid of any modern luxuries, with his villagers happily working together to help sustain this way of life, with some harvesting the crops from their farms, some fishing in the nearby lake, and others working to make the necessary tools to make everyone's life easier. If looking into the details within both the original RE4 and Resident Evil 4 Remake, we come to find that most of the population of this small community know of each other and have had a set foundation in their beliefs in religion and the folklore tales that span centuries prior to the start of this game, where the local citizens have come to know the story of the Salazar hero who purged this remote region of Valdelobos of the evil Los Illuminados, a parasite worshipping cult who had their goal to infect everyone with an organism called Las Plagas, causing them to become mindless drones serving the will of his leader. And so, during this crusade that the ancestral Salazar hero led, he executed those who followed this pagan religion, and then established the Catholic-based teachings in his stead, leading to centuries of peace and prosperity for this remote region, with this exact folklore tale was passed down from generation to generation by the elders of the village. So with these humble beginnings, the population of the village community thrived. Now, now this is where Father Mendez comes in, where in both versions of Resident Evil 4 gives us some inklings of how Bitoris Mendez was as a local Catholic priest, where he would serve as the moral compass for those in need. Though prior to his leadership role, not much of his past has been told in stories or documented, with the best evidence of his younger years was found inside of his home, where here in the remake, we find many disturbing artifacts and symbols throughout the manor. But beyond this, we see a collection of photographs scattered throughout this house. This becomes more prevalent when we reach inside the attic area. Here we find more photos, with a couple providing some interesting story points written on the back side, with the first was an image of what looks to be an older Catholic priest. At first, when I saw this photo, I thought this was Chief Mendez prior to his villainous role in Resident Evil 4, but come to find out that this was the Catholic priest that handed Batoris Mendez the reins to lead the village in his stead, with the text on the back of this picture reads, A Father's Portrait Watch over the village in my stead, and may smiles always find you in photographs. The interesting part to note from this text is the notion of photographs, because as stated before, we find many of these seemingly random photos scattered through the Mendez Manor, and later on we find out that there was a treasure found within the attic of this home, which just happens to be a vintage style camera. Usually treasures like these pertain to some of the lore with the characters in Resident Evil 4, so for us to find this inside of Batoris Mendez's attic indicates that he was once a photographer, explaining why there were so many of these pictures scattered around his home, with some of these images showing the villagers prior to their infection from the Plaga's parasite. What's more is that we find additional files that corroborates with the older Catholic priest's photo, where in this document, it states that the elder entrusted the village to me today. He told me I can learn my duties as I go. I will start by keeping a record of the village. There are still many words I cannot write, but the elder 
encourages me, I will do my best. There is a young boy who lives in the cabin by the lake with his grandfather. It seems that his mother was called to heaven upon his birth. His grandfather doesn't talk much, but the lad is very bright and spirited. He told me a story about a knight who rides a donkey again today. The boy's grandfather has fallen ill, and his condition worsens every day. The boy worries terribly about him, and there are murmurs of madness among the villagers. As I took my leave, the old man pulled me aside and said, if anything happens, you know what to do. I could only nod in response. It was a terrible night. Everyone stood around the cabin and watched it as it burned to the ground. The boy looked on without saying a word. Even as dawn broke, he didn't move a muscle. The next day, he was gone. This file covers two important topics, which the first, as mentioned before, was the correlation of the picture of the older Catholic priest and how he entrusted the village to Bitoros Mendez, and second was the story of the young boy and his grandfather, who like the village priest also had a photo found within the attic of Mendez's home. And digging deeper into the lore, we come to find out that this was about the Navarro family, which at first glance, you may think of what significance does this play within RE4, but then later we come to to find out that this young boy is actually Luis Serra. Though we don't know exactly what Mendez's responsibilities were after the grandfather's passing, we can only insinuate that he would have most likely looked after the young boy. Evident with that nod that he gave to the grandfather as stated in the file that we just read. But with that said, the next couple of files we'll go over gives us a better picture of what has occurred just prior to and during the Great Conversion. And you may be asking what this Great Conversion was. Well, it's the mass change from a Catholic based community to becoming devout followers of Los Illuminados. Cease your pointless struggling. Abandon your body to the will of our God. All the men cheered when they heard the boat as it raced across the surface of the water. That magnificent oil will surely help us catch fish easier than ever before. The ironworks was only built a year ago, but has already merged well with the village. Our sickles and knives shine like never before. The two fish we got from the deal will eat almost anything and are breeding well. The fish farm in the swamp is almost making excellent progress. During the day, I teach literacy and mathematics to the children. Every evening, I I dine with a family to hear their grievances and recent gossip, all under the roof of this home we built. Since I opened the village up to the outside, we have prospered and the people are happier. Smiles have even started to appear on their faces. A strange group of black robed people descended upon the village from the castle and raised an ominous flag with a spider-like insignia upon it. After preaching about salvation and forgiveness, they injected us with something they claim will cure us of madness. Can they be trusted? This note written by Batoros Mendez shows the fatal decisions made that caused the eventual downfall of this village community. With the beginning of this note still covering the prosperous life of the people of this remote region and Father Mendez's interactions with the locals. Also, we have to take a quick note that he did mention that he opened up the village to the outside. This in turn like a predator hunting his vulnerable prey at night. The sudden and timely appearance of Los Illuminados should have been a huge red flag because for an outside group like them to suddenly preach about salvation to a Catholic based community. Father Mendez and the many other villagers should have pushed against the ideologies Los Illuminados was spewing. Instead, they gave this outside group a chance to be heard. This was evident with the pictures shown here, with Sadler leading his men in black robes, providing us with a perfect image of what Bitoros Mendez saw when they arrived at the village. Another great picture that correlates with this file is the sermon that Ramon Salazar gave inside of the village church here on the podium. He most likely convinced many people to take up this new religion as a better way of life and that this will help cleanse them of their sins. What's also interesting seen in this photo is the Verdugo monster standing by Ramon's side while he preaches to the masses. Again, this fact alone should have deterred the many villagers from accepting this new faith as they saw these monsters firsthand. Meanwhile, this begs the question on where Father Mendez was in all of this because as the leader of this village community, he shouldn't have let this this take place, especially Ramon's sermon inside of his own church, unless Father Mendez approved of this willingly. 
Though by the end of the file, he wrote that he still questioned if they can trust Los Illuminados. But by that time, it was already too late because the population was already given the injection that would cure madness. Now looking back and comparing this version of the storyline to the one depicted in the original Resident Evil 4, this mass conversion happened in a slightly different way because instead of several black robe Los Illuminados marching down the village, led by Osman Sadler and then preaching about a new way of salvation, instead Sadler himself first approached Father Mendez, which was a smart move on his end because once he was able to convert the Catholic priest, this would open up the opportunity to easily influence the rest of the villagers. Though these specifics on what methods or tales Osman Sadler told Father Mendez to cause him to abandon his Catholic beliefs and become a devout member of Los Illuminados has never been revealed. Also, the important thing to note here, since now Sadler has the full backing of the village leader, this would allow his sphere of influence to be much more effective. In turn, would lead the mass congregation of the village population at the community square. Here we see in this photo how Sadler was the one who preached about Los Illuminados and that they should accept this new way of life. And right next to Sadler, we see Father, or more so Chief Mendez, backing up his claim. Then after the sermon, there were those who accepted this new faith blindly and there were those who rejected. What happens next would be absolutely evil as those who did convert to Los Illuminados were told that their bloods were cleansed and that those who rejected this new faith were sinners. Were similar to how they cured the madness in the remake, the new followers of this pagan cult received an injection as well, and it was their duty to make sure that everyone obliged to the same belief. Those who refused to accept this new faith were then forcibly tied down and given the cure to madness against their will. Well, after the eventual inoculation of the entire village population, it seems as though all was well. That is until the first symptoms started to show with many villagers claiming that they were coughing up blood. Some started to show uncontrollable rage, others stuck in a daze, and some wandering aimlessly and repeating. Soon after, all the children of the village perished, and then the first sight of a plaga bursting through someone's head appeared, with a mass cheering this as a miracle. Meanwhile again, where was Chief Mendez in all of this, and why did he take this new faith when he was already the village Catholic priest? But regardless, both depictions of the conversion shows a tragic story of the downfall of the village community. What's more was the utter negligence of Chief Mendez to thwart off this parasite-worshipping cult. Also on a quick side note, during this mass conversion in both versions of RE4, no one seemed to question that this very same group was supposedly eradicated centuries ago by the Salazar family hero and that this folk hero story was passed down from generation to generation. But now as Los Illuminados stood right in front of the masses, they preached about how the folk hero story was actually a lie, that the ancestral Salazar family hero was just jealous of Los Illuminados and committed heinous crimes against this religious group. But with that said, in both versions of this storyline, Chief Mendez has shown to be either negligent or actually the one who helped propagate this mass conversion. Our first encounter with Chief Mendez in Resident Evil 4 happens just after we find a captured Luis Serra. Immediately, we see the superhuman-like powers that the Big Cheese displays, with both versions showing him to easily subdue Leon. <laughs> ah, little rough, don't you think? <clears throat> Oh, you're not like them? No. You? <clears throat> okay, I have only one very important question. Do you got a smoke? Got gum. Perfect. The big cheese. What?
The interesting change made here was that Chief Mendez was the one who gave Leon the injection of the Plagas Parasite in the remake. This compared to the original, where it was a random cultist who did this act. And then our next encounter with the Big Cheese happens inside of his own home, where Leon again finds himself in a precarious situation. And in both versions, we see that Chief Mendez acknowledges that the Plaga has assimilated well with him, showing him to be a viable carrier. The blood has accepted the gift. Though the thing I want to point out in this encounter with the Big Cheese was that in the remake, we see him walk out just after confirming Leon's infection with the Plaga, whereas in the original RE4, we have an additional stern warning to Leon if he does continue to antagonize against Los Illuminados. You carry the same blood as us, it seems. Nevertheless, you're an outsider. Just remember. If you become unpleasant to our eyes, you'll face severe consequences. <laughs> what? Same blood? Also, another important thing to point out is Ada's involvement in saving Leon in both versions. Chief Mendez was actually very suspicious that there might be a third-party intruder that was causing some disturbances against Los Illuminados, and Ada's sudden appearance only confirmed these suspicions. Furthermore, Chief Mendez correlated these sudden intrusions with Luis Serra's betrayal. Such a stickler for details, hide. But with that, the remake does give us an additional encounter that mixes up a certain moment seen from the original RE4. This happens when Leon and Ashley make their attempt to escape the village. This moment where Chief Mendez bends the locking doors on the gate is directly taken from the original, where he does the exact same action, though that event happens inside of the barn area where the boss fight against him occurs. And with that, our only objective in this section of the game is to run away from the big cheese, though if you do decide to try to attack him, maybe hoping that he'll be knocked down unconscious. Unfortunately, that won't be the case, with your attacks only slowing him down to a certain extent because in this moment of the game, he's practically invincible. And if he does grab a hold of Ashley, it's an automatic game over. Then, our final encounter with Chief Mendez happens inside of the barn, where in the original, I like the depiction of him being able to move at unbelievable speeds. With the cutscene shown from Leon's point of view, we barely see the dark after image of him making his way behind Leon, whereas in the remake, he broke through the upper portion of the barn. And with that said, this is where I give so much praise for the remake, because of the modern iteration of this boss fight, it perfectly embodies how they were able to improve on the original's foundation with Chief Mendez looking absolutely amazing and horrible with his mutation, along with the perfect reimagining of this setting. So with the first portion of this battle happens almost exactly as in the original, with the Big Cheese trying to corner Leon so he can attack with one of his mutated limbs from his back. And it wasn't until the second portion of the battle that the remake did an absolute masterpiece. Here, Chief Mendez now has an additional scorpion-like pincers, and looking closely, we can see the the distal end of his severed spine has also now mutated into a scorpion-like tail. Also, I just want to deviate from the boss fight for just a bit, so we can appreciate the amount of detail his mutation has to offer. With closer inspection, we can see the actual separation between Chief Mendez and the Plaga Parasite housed on his backside, with his actual spine hanging on the lateral side, and the Plaga making up for the larger centipede-like elongation of his body. Though returning back to this part of the boss fight, he doesn't just continue to swing closer or farther from Leon and make his attack, because now he has added more to his arsenal, being able to throw either some burning portions of wood from the barn or some red barrels he picks up. Also, we have to take note how dexterous he is with the way he navigates around the environment. He even caught me off guard on how fast he was able to move from the back end of the barn to immediately right in front of Leon. Also, another great aspect that I appreciated in this fight was a small one-liner's Chief Mendes would say during this battle, showing him to be completely subservient to the Illuminados religion, characterizing him as someone fully devoted to their teachings and beliefs, but just in a twisted fashion, where he would call Leon a heretic for his actions and at the same time praising his god. You heretic, burn in his flame! Lord, grant me a 
your strength. Holy fire, cleanse him of his sins. Also, I have to give credit to the amazing soundtrack that plays during this boss fight, with the first portion of the music plays that eerie siren-like sound that was also played in the original, but it was at the second phase of this boss battle that the soundtrack changes and becomes much more profound that perfectly fits the situation, where it gave that sense of tension and urgency, providing the perfect send-off for Chief Mendez. The portrayal of Chief Mendez in Resident Evil 4 Remake was amazing, showing what a force of nature he can be with the way he can easily subdue Leon, providing us a good example of what it's like for someone who was infected with one of the dominant forms of the Plagueis Parasite, imbuing Chief Mendez with superhuman-like strength and being able to adapt after sustaining a major injury, mutating into a centipede scorpion-like monster. But with that said, if there was a small reservation I had with his character portrayal, I would say that it didn't feel like he had much screen time overall, where I was hoping to see a cutscene where he recounts his involvement with the conversion from a peaceful Catholic-based community to joining Los Illuminados, providing us a great visual representation of what truly happened prior to the downfall of the village, and how his negligence of allowing Los Illuminados to easily walk in and provide their own teachings and beliefs to the masses without any kind of resistance, making Chief Mendez truly liable for what happened to the innocent people of Valdelobos and coming up short to the duty he was entrusted by the previous leader of this village community, where the smiles that were once supposed to be portrayed in those photographs taken have now changed into madness. Anyways, what are your guys' thoughts about Chief Mendez and did you guys like his role in Resident Evil 4 Remake? Please let me know your opinions in the comment section down below. Also, if you guys enjoy the content, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day, and this is Hey Deva, and I'll see you guys on the next video.